Hello friends, welcome to Mechanical Engineering Online Classes. Let us see what dynamic equilibrium is and how D'Alembert's principle is related to Newton's second law of motion. We know that static equilibrium condition is that sum of external forces is zero. So though there are external forces acting on an object, the sum of the external forces means the resultant external force is zero, the body is at rest. And hence the name static condition that sigma f equal to zero is a static condition. Now in case the sum of external forces is not zero means there is an external unbalanced force. So by Newton's second law of motion we know that when an unbalanced external force say sigma f is acting on a body or particle of mass m then that object will move with an acceleration a in the direction of the external unbalanced force in the direction of that sigma f. So Newton's second law is written as sigma f is equal to m into a. This same statement sigma f equal to m a is rewritten by a French mathematician d'Alembert as sigma f plus of minus m a equal to zero where sigma f is the sum of external forces that are there and minus m a is the inertia force. So d'Alembert has written the sum of these two forces that is the external and uh, external forces and the inertia force as zero. So LHS is equal to zero is a condition of equilibrium but since the body is in motion because sigma f is not equal to zero it is a condition of dynamic equilibrium. So the condition of dynamic equilibrium is sigma f plus of minus m a equal to zero. Therefore the force system consisting of external forces and inertia forces can be considered to be keeping the particle in equilibrium but because the sum of external forces is not zero the particle has got an acceleration a and because it is in the form of sum of different forces equal to zero that is coming under equilibrium but because particle is in motion it is called as dynamic equilibrium. So this is a relation between D'Alembert's principle and Newton's second law of motion and hence the difference between static equilibrium and also dynamic equilibrium. When P is a particle that is subjected to forces F1 and F2, then we can draw the free body diagram as this is the resultant force, sigma F. So the kinetic diagram will be just this one, this is particle P it will it is subjected to the resultant force shown as m a m is the mass of the particle a is the acceleration due to the uh, resultant forces acting on particle and this m a is in the direction of sigma f thanks for watching if this video was of help to you please like it and share it with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to our channel